What's up, YouTube? This is Thomas from Thomas the Vest, and thank you for watching. Today, I want to talk about Johnson & Johnson, ticker symbol GNG. &G. This week, they are going to present the quarterly results, and I thought it would be perfect time to do a fundamental analysis. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe to get notified when I'm posting a video. I also appreciate an early thumbs up, which helps me within the YouTube algorithm. For now, let's dive into it. Johnson & Johnson is a holding company which is engaged in the research and development, manufacture and sale of a range of products in the healthcare field. It operates through three segments, consumer, pharmaceutical and medical devices. Its primary focus is products related to human health and well-being. Now that we know what Johnson & Johnson does, it's time to do a fundamental analysis, starting off with the PE ratio. Johnson & Johnson has a PE ratio of 29. For such a big company, I think this is too high, so it's a red X. In a moment, we will see the growth potential, which tells me why the PE is too high. The profit margin is at 18%. This is very nice and consistent over the past year, so it's a big jump. I want this number above 10%, so they do a good job. Since 2016, the revenue is up 17%, so this means a big check again. They grew at 4% annually in the past 5 years. This is not a lot, so keep that in mind. Since 2016, the profit is down 4%, so it's a red X. Margins were a bit better back then. This might be something to do some more research about. Return on assets is below 10% in the past 5 years. Return on investments is above 10% the past five years, but in my opinion it's still a red X, because the return on assets are below 10%. Johnson & Johnson is buying back shares. Not by a lot, just 3% in the past five years, but it's a jump. I think big companies like Johnson & Johnson always should buy back their shares, to reward the investor. With the current ratio you want to check if the company is capable of paying their current liabilities with the current assets. You want this number sitting at 2 where 1.5 is the absolute minimum. At this moment, Johnson & Johnson have a current ratio of 1.28. This is below my minimum, so it's a red X. But I have to admit that I don't bother that much right now. Free cash flow is up 28% since 2016, so it's a big jump. I think this is very important because it's used for paying dividends, do acquisitions and buyback shares, and some other things. As always, we have three stock price scenarios, a low, a mid, and a high. I think it's fair to assume that Johnson & Johnson could have a mid multiple. Revenue is up 70% in the past 5 years, so there is some growth but not a lot. If we use this mid multiple, Johnson & Johnson is overvalued by 15%, and the fair stock price would be around $140 instead of $168. So it's a red X from Johnson & Johnson is a nice company to have. It's an enormous company with a strong track record, but you never should overpay for a company with no high growth potential. For now, I will skip them. I think when they do buy back more shares and get profits up in the same ratio as the revenue, this might be an interesting dividend company, but not from a value point of investing. But remember to always do your own research and never fully trust on what I or other YouTubers say about the stock. I'm not a financial advisor and this content is just for entertaining purposes only. I hope you liked this video and I did bring some insights of the company to you. I'd really appreciate it, thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to get notified when I'm posting a new video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video.